Spaces Sims, and we are back with more Variable Barricade, and I am back with a bird who's a pain in my ass. Just had to stress that, because I'm about to tell him. You stop being a pain in my ass! Uh, good lord. You know, I have not been home long enough for you to be this annoying. Don't you bite me! Choose a nasty bird! <laughs> he just keeps attacking my headset. Stop! You're ruining everything. <laughs> I love him. He's a pain in the ass. Seriously, I got home and I went upstairs to change and like pick out clothes for the next day. And he's just downstairs shrieking because he can't see me. And I'm like, oh my God, just shut up. I love him, but it drives me crazy because then he's just down there and he like freaks out because he can't see me. And he's like, oh, for God's sakes, give me five minutes. Now the other bird's downstairs chirping because we left him because he didn't want to come upstairs. He doesn't. Sometimes he's nice and he wants you to talk to him, but he's like, don't touch me and I don't want to sit with you. And I feel bad for him because he's downstairs chirping. <laughs> he's calling for you because he doesn't like me. Um, He's actually been a lot friendlier, but like, I'll go and he'll like sit on my hand and he talks to you and you're like, okay, I'm going to try to walk over to the couch with you. And then he's like, no. And it's like, all right, well, I feel bad because like we sit on the couch across the freaking room. Like... But he doesn't want to come over there. But you know, like, when you, you talk to him, he chirps and he's happy. He can hear my voice. He's actually trying to, like, like... <laughs> just feel bad. You want attention, but you won't come sit with us. He's not at that level yet. It's only taken two years for him to get to actually be nice to me. So, you know, two more years he'll be sitting with us again. I don't know. Uh, before I moved, he used to come to the couch because it was closer to his cage. Now it's further away. So, I don't know. He'll figure it out eventually. <sighs> Adventures and birds. Anyway, we were here at 30 seconds, right? Yes. Okay. So, without warning, Shion's attempts at pampering spin out of control. He proposes 30 seconds stress relief. Shion, I don't know if you should brag about that. Oh, that's not what he's talking about. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing shade at Shion. Coming back home was now a dangerous endeavor. Back when I was getting used to this new routine, I was defensive. But now I've gotten used to it, and for better or worse, I no longer hesitate to open the door. However, I didn't think I'd end up recalling that sense of nervousness again for some reason. Oh, welcome home, Miss Spacey. Oh, I don't know. This puts me at ease. That's all I need. Stress relief? I just need to stare at Kasuga. It causes me more stress, actually, because I love him so fucking much and the game won't let me have him and then it's stressing me out. Why won't you let me have Kazuka? I, I mean, we, I... <sighs> Hello. Kazuka greeted me as usual as I got out of the car. I then proceeded to the front door, but... Hold on. Is something the matter? I couldn't help but stop Kasuga the moment he was about to open the door. I needed to thoroughly prepare myself before it opened. It's okay. You got this. Nothing to be nervous about. Just do what you normally do and everything will be fine. <laughs> the narrator voice, right? But it will never be fine. After taking some deep breaths, I open my mouth to speak. Kasuga, would you... I apologize, Miss Spacey. I have some business to attend to at the family estate. Oh, okay. If you'll excuse me. He looks sad about it, though, doesn't he? He's like, I'm sad to be leaving you. I'm sad for you to be leaving me, too. Here goes nothing. After watching Kasuga disappear into the distance, I readied myself and reached for the doorknob. And then... Spacey, you're back. When did you turn into Nayuta? <laughs> the moment I opened the door, I ran into Shion. He smiled brightly at me. Hi? I've been waiting for you. Waiting? You mean right here? The whole time? Uh, come on, I'm not Nayuta. I came to see you after hearing the car outside. We did we read this before? Because this is like deja vu. Oh, right. Shion walked closer and closer toward me as I braced myself. How was school? I'm sure it was a breeze for you. Again, deja vu. Didn't we do this already? Exact conversation. Then he slowly and carefully caressed my head. Which had become our new normal. I feel like this conversation has become your new normal. And it's weird. Like, yes, there's a thing about a routine. Oh, hey, hi, welcome home. But the exact same conversation? What is happening? Are we losing our mind? I think we're losing our mind. We've already lost our mind. Forget it. 
Ichi has got a snack for you, so hurry and get changed. And with that, Shion went right back into the living room. Touching my head, then leaving. He's just doing whatever he wants. He got me again! Ever since the day we talked about hair products and he caressed my head, Shion's mysterious behavior continued. Before school, after coming home, and after dinner, he would come up to me and caress my head quickly so no one else noticed, then leave with a big smile on his face. Why is he doing this? It's like torture. She's like, he's being nice, it's torture. It was so peculiar that I tried asking him about it, but... Why did you touch my head? Did you not like it? I didn't say that. Then it's fine, right? Uh, do you not want me to? No, if you want to, you can keep doing it. In the end, I didn't get my answer. If I knew he had an ulterior motive for doing it, I would have smacked his hand away. But he didn't. It was just kind of like showing me affection. Just like with a pet, when you want to give them some simple affection and that's all. That's precisely why I can't refuse. All I can do is freeze up. There wasn't any harm in it. Besides, I didn't hate it. I'm overthinking this, and I'm tired. I should just leave it be for now. Several days later... Anyway. <laughs> Sheehan was again caressing my head. After doing it, he left, seemingly satisfied while I was frozen in place. This is still going on. Why didn't I stop him when he first started this whole thing? Well, it's too late now, you're gonna have to marry him. It's been six years, but like, maybe I should tell him I hate it. <laughs> After dinner, as usual, the boys were watching TV and laughing. I got up to go somewhere else. But at that moment... I'll wait for you in my room, okay, Spacey? She whispered as he leaned in close to me, and my body tensed up. Well, that sounds suspicious. I I've got some really tough homework tonight, so uh, it's going to take me a while. Okay, see you then. He could at least pretend to listen! And so I couldn't stop him today either. I left the living room without delay, sighing at how selfish she was being. He's not really, though. He's giving you affection. Which is good for you. You're, it's just awkward for you because you're not used to it. At first, it was just him caressing my head. That's really all it was. And yet, somehow, I don't know why, I found myself in a strange situation. One regret after another led to my current predicament. Um. This is adorable. And a very unexpected CG. Thank you. There, there. I didn't know anymore if I was embarrassed or not. I was beyond, it was beyond, oh, I was beyond embarrassment. I was at a total loss. After I had finished my homework, for some reason, I felt pulled towards Xion's room. And now he's, like, holding us. Are we sitting in his lap? I'm just going to assume we are, because, like, where else would our body be? And then he hugged me. This means nothing. Totally nothing. Well, that means something. Oh, now she's closed her eyes. She's enjoying it. I closed my eyes and waited in Xion's arms for time to pass. I'd been anxious about him stroking my hair, but I also didn't mind it. Just be quiet and let the time pass. Your hair is nice and soft today, but I'd like it if it were a little shinier. Just wait. You're so warm, Spacey. Any minute now? And so cute. Am I even able to wait? Shion? Hmm? Your 30 seconds are up. Really? But I want a little more time. What? In direct contrast to what I said, Shion squeezed me harder. So <laughs> we agreed to like give him 30 seconds of holding us. This is weird. How did how did we get here? I'm very curious. Not complaining, I would enjoy it, but you know, it's a very awkward situation. I mean You have a lot of tension in your shoulders. You're still quite stressed, aren't you? I mean I feel like this is a very stressful situation for her. Because, you know, on one hand, you're like, yes, hold me, Shion, and pet me. But on the other hand, she's like, um, I don't know how to do this. So, you know, stress. That's because I'm nervous here. 
My heart was going to explode. My cheeks were hot and I felt faint. He is conditioning us to just enjoy being held and petted. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying. There, there. Let me take care of you. You really are so cute. Oh my god, please let me go! My cheeks burned even hotter when Shion unexpectedly whispered in my ear. This is so weird because, like, you're sitting here like, Oh, this is, like, nice! She's, like, awkward and she doesn't know how to accept, like, hugs and love and affection. So, like, this is so cute that he's, like, doing this. But on the other hand, you're like, This is slightly disturbing if you think about it because, like, She's kind of been, like, lured into this. Like, I'm going to hold you for 30 seconds. You're like, okay, I'm scared. I want to get away. Like, like she kind of wants to be there, but kind of also doesn't. So she's kind of teetering on that line. But, like, imagine this in a totally different game where you are, like, a prisoner. And they're like, I'm just going to hold you and pet you. And you're like, please just let me go. And, like, you're kind of actually scared. Like, be like, predator, what is wrong with you? So it's like, this is teetering on this line of like, oh, or, ooh, but wait. <laughs> I don't hate it because we like Shion and we know he doesn't have like devious ulterior motives. But like at the same time, you're like, there, there's kind of something wrong with this. Like, It's not totally like sweet and nice. And if you didn't like Shion, oh God, I can only imagine if you were playing this and you were like, nah, fuck Shion, I hate Shion. And he did this. Oh, you'd light him on fire, wouldn't you? Did anybody actually, like, strongly dislike Xion and get to this point and go, like, Fuck you, no! You know what I mean? Like, I love Xion, so, like... And he's a little freaking weird. They're all a little weird. I kind of love them all. But, like, this, it's like... Aw, yeah, but no, I can actually see where it could feel problematic, depending on how you feel about him. Because, like... On one hand, she, she is starting to have feelings for him, and this is the route we're going down. But she's not quite there yet, where... Her being weird about this and not totally comfortable is, like, slightly disturbing, but on that deeper level. Me, I'm like, no, I love this. Keep holding me and petting me. It'll be fine. We'll get over it. <laughs> but that's fucked up, too, you know? Uh, this activity of ours became a habit only a few days ago. <laughs> This activity. It sounds so fucked up when you say that. This activity became our habit. Just him holding you and petting you for 30 seconds? <laughs> okay. Phrasing. One day, after the head caressing thing had become a habit, having already halfway given up, I opened the front door. And then, but it's this. You know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, like, oh, okay. She on this is cute. You're trying to open her up because she's not used to affection. But again, take everything back. And it's like, well, I start with petting your head. Okay, now I'm holding you. Now I'm doing this. And it's like, you're just slowly pushing the line until all of a sudden she's like, how did we get here where now we're married and we have two kids and I don't even like you, but I have sex with you every day? Because like, you're slowly pushing and conditioning and pushing the borders. And like, that could be seriously shady and disturbing. But again, it's Shion. And we're like, oh. We're a little hard ass and we don't understand affection, so this is cute, but it's really not actually. <laughs> it's slightly disturbing at the same time, but I'm here for it because I like Shion, so. Yeah. A welcome home, Spacey. Yeah, hi, I. Without warning, Shion hugged me. One, two, three. What? What is he doing? Why is he counting? Yeah, he just accosted me with a hug. Like, she, and that's like crossing the line. I couldn't mount a decent defense, though I panicked internally. And that's the thing, too. Like, if you're a normal person, you're like, um, yeah, maybe don't hug me. Just not into it, you know? But, like, he knows that she can't say that. So there, that's the slightly disturbing. But at the same time, I don't think he's doing it to be sinister. Slightly, like, I will make her like me. By kind of, like these Pavlovian responses of like, I'm going to hug you and you were going to like it. But also it's nice for people to show you affection. You know what I mean? Like, like a pet, you know? Oh, it's a scared new pet. You're like, you're not going to like, I will just never touch you. You're like, I'm going to slowly start to pet you so that you understand that people are not going to beat you or something. You know what I mean? You kind of get them, condition them to know you're not going to hurt them. He's kind of doing that to us. And on one hand, you're like, well, that's nice. And again, on the other hand, you're like, a little, little, little suspicious. But like, I mean, uh, the 
fact that, like, I love you, Shia. Wait, it's a little sus. I'm just, I'm just saying I'm slightly concerned. But, but I'm here for it. Meanwhile, Shion continued counting all the way up to 30. And then he finally let go of me. I didn't get it. Why? Why did you? What? I heard a 30 second hug can reduce a third of your daily stress. Oh, that explains a lot. So would a 90 second hug reduce all of your daily stress then? Right? 30 seconds per third? So, I'm just saying, I think that they should implement, like, hugs at work. <laughs> I would not want to hug half the people I work with. Huh? Oh, do you not believe me? They've been using this kind of therapy in the medical field lately. It's completely reputable. The trick is to squeeze the person tightly. When you do that, they say the body releases endorphins more easily. I mean, hugs are nice. Unless you are a person who doesn't like being touched, then hugs are stressful. She is a little bit in that, like, I think eventually she's going to be like, oh, yeah, no, these are nice. But, like, right now it's like, uh, danger, danger, Will Robinson, please don't touch me. Where I don't think it's helping. I think it's making it worse. But, you know. You tend to get stressed out a lot, right, Spacey? So I thought some therapy might be in order. I think you petting my head and hugging me was stressing me out. But, eh. Therapy? See you for the same thing tomorrow. Okay, wait! Same thing tomorrow? I do love that he's just force-hugging us. It could be worse. He could put us in a cage, so I guess the force-hugging is slightly less problematic. From that point on, he added the 30-second hug to the head-caressing habit. Still, I wasn't going to accept it all so easily. And yet, here we are. I looked him right in the eye and told him so. More or less. This thing is a problem. A what thing? This! I'm too shy to say the word hug. Oh, girl, stop! Don't. Really? How so? How so? What if other people see us? But I was careful to make sure we weren't seen. Oh, I know. How about this? We'll do it in my room. Oh, that doesn't make it seem any better. Like, at least if someone came around the corner, they'd be like, what the fuck? Why are you hugging Shion? Then we'd have to hug everybody. So we definitely get a lot of... We would get all of our stress wiped out because there's four of them. So they'd be like two minutes worth of hugging. So, but like then he's secretly sneaking into Shion's room for hugs. It's going to look so much worse than if someone finds you in the hallway. I'm just saying. Misconstrue that. What were you doing in Shion's room? I was only in there for 30 seconds. I mean, okay. So Shion's not great in bed, but you were in there. Like, you know what I mean? They don't know how long you were in there. <laughs> like, it's saying 30 seconds is not going to help matters. And that's how I ended up where I was now. Why didn't I just flat out refuse? Because you kind of like it. I surrendered, though I was frozen stiff. She gently looked into my eyes. You don't need to be so nervous. I'm not going to do anything bad. I just try to relax, okay? Yeah, yet. I'm just saying. I, I can't. Oh? I'm not used to this. It wasn't just hugging. Handshakes, placing a hand on someone's shoulder. It was very difficult for me to do those kinds of things. Okay, see, and this is where, like, the unproblematicness. Because, like, she just has an awkwardness of touching people. A handshake, a pet. Oh, my God, touching people is weird. And, like, he's, like, slowly breaking you out of that and understanding that touching is not necessarily inherently bad. And it's okay to receive affection in the form of head pets. Or hugging or something. You know what I mean? So he's doing a good thing for her. But at the same time, again, it's the, I don't want you to touch me. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Please don't. Too bad. <laughs> I mean, it's like, hmm. Hmm. No one did this with me. Not even when I was little. Yeah, and I blame Kasuga for that. Kasuga should have held us. You know? Rude. Really? She nodded and squeezed me a little tighter, and then spoke in a calm voice. I mean, her parents did die when we were young, so. I think people don't really touch each other's heads because some people find it rude. If you're not a family member, a close friend, or a lover, then you really can't do that. Which is true. I don't think I want a random stranger patting me on the head. That's weird. Plus, I feel like my dad would pat us on the head sometimes. Like, walk by, like, boop, boop, and, like, I just can't imagine anybody else doing Like, don't touch me. My dad used to pat me on the head. You can't do that. You know what I mean? 
Like, my dad had nicknames for all of us. You can't just use those nicknames! That's my dad thing, okay? So, like... I mean, it wasn't, like, all the time, but sometimes it'd just be a little pat or a little ruffle. Like, just brief things. So it's like... And it wasn't, again, super common, but I just remember that. So it's like, yeah, I don't want a stranger walking by patting me. Could you imagine being at work and someone just walks by patting you on the head? The hell? I mean, I guess it really depends. Like, you, the la ladies at work sometimes are a little more, like, touchy social. Like, oh, touch your arm or let me look at your... Like, it, just not quite the amount of, like, whoa, personal space. What the hell? But, like... You random man just pats you on the- Excuse me, sir! <laughs> like, sure fuck you can't do this! Although, I'm just saying, you know, hugs are nice. But again, it is awkward. You're like, you know, until you get to that level of friendship and you're like, or, I mean, my friend is a hugger. So I got used to it. She's like, I'm just gonna hug you. She just hugs everyone. Oh, okay. So I just got used to it, but I'm one of those people like, no, I just prefer not to touch people. I don't know you. I'm not gonna touch you. But, like, family and shit, I'll hug. Great, you know? But, like, strangers, I don't want to hug you. I don't know you. But because my friend, when I first met her, was definitely a hugger, you're like, oh, okay, we're just hugging. So now I went to my other friend's house, and what, they had a couple other people over, and one of them was leaving, and he's, like, he's hugging the random other guy, and I'm like, oh, you're a hugger. We're doing this? All right, fine. We'll just, like, the, I don't mind now if, like... Like, certain people are huggers. You're like, oh, you're a hugger. All right, fine, whatever. Like, okay. Because, like, you know, I don't get hugged enough, okay? I don't get hugged enough at home. My bird is hugging me right now. He's got his body shoved against my neck. That's a bird version of a hug. So, that that's it. That's all the hugs I can. <laughs> anyway. I'm sure your servants were very careful, too. Including Jeeves. I know! It's so mean! I wish Kasuga would have touched me more! That sounds wildly inappropriate, but I'm also here for that. I'm just saying. You know, now. Not when we were younger. That would have been inappropriate. But, like, now we're consenting adults, Jeeves. Let's go, Kasuga. Anyway. It did your grandfather not pat your head? There's no way that villain would do something like that. You could have asked him to. No, I couldn't. Why not? I was silent for a moment, then responded with, Because that's not like me, it's not proper. We don't know what's like us. We only know what is proper and befitting of a Tojo heiress. You know? Um. And I think, yeah, okay, that's the right answer. But I also think what's like her is what is proper and expected of her. So there, it's kind of twofold. So that's not like me. Yeah, because it's not proper. And I only follow etiquette and don't do things that I want to do. I only do things that are I think are expected of me or I know are expected of me. So technically both the same answer. Not in the scape of the game, but you know what I mean. Club. I think it is just random. The weapon over there. Anyway. Because it's improper to ask for something like that. Is it? I mean, he's your family. Yes, it is. Besides, that's not something you can just outright ask someone to do for you. I mean, you kind of can, depending on the person. Have you tried asking Kasuga? Excuse me, Kasuga, can you just fucking love me? He's a butler. I'm pretty sure he has to do whatever you say, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's how Spacey gets her, man. If a person doesn't want to do it, then there's no point. I'm not so sure. Well, I am. I don't find it improper at all. It makes me happy to do things like stroke your hair or hug you. Because I think you're so beautiful and lovely and that I just want to do more for you. You really are beautiful. She unsmiled warmly at me and gently rubbed my back. Did you suddenly start caressing my head and hugging me and stuff to spoil me? That's right. I started with the beauty stuff at first because I thought it made sense for a girl your age. But then you told me it was extravagant. When I started stroking your hair, you looked happy, Spacey. I did? I thought maybe you wanted something simpler. Like affection, kindness, just some spoiling. Because, I mean, if you think about it, again, our parents died. And I thought we were like, were we nine? Right? I thought that was it. So, but it's sad that even as like a young child, your parents weren't affectionate with you. It's not like, oh, you were a toddler when they died. 
And then you, well, actually, maybe we were nine when we got Kasuga. Right. So I don't know. I can't remember how old they said she was like when her parents died, but it's like, if your parents kind of weren't around or they died when you were young, you wouldn't remember. And then you got thrust into this life where like your grandfather and your servants and nobody is being that affectionate with you as a child. <clears throat> or even if you remember like, Oh yeah. Up until like, four or five years old, whatever, my parents might have been a little bit affectionate with you, just moderately, whatever. But then you, you, most of your life, you've been ripped away from that. So you might block it out or just be like, well, nope. Do not get head pats from anyone anymore, you know? So she's not used to the kindness and a little bit of spoiling and the little affections. I thought maybe you needed obvious things the most. Well, that was just your imagination. Okay. But you didn't refuse, did you? Plus, it is true that hugging reduces stress. Why don't you try closing your eyes for a moment? Huh? It'll be okay. I hesitated for a moment. Then I looked at Shion's gentle smile and closed my eyes. I let go and closed my eyes. Just relax. Rest in my arms. I've got you. There's nothing to worry about. Let yourself be taken care of. No one else is here, and no one else can see you, not even me. I could hear the honesty in his voice. I laid there in Xion's arms and kept my eyes closed. He's so warm, and I can hear his heartbeat. As I listened to the rhythm of his heart, I felt an uncontrollable urge to cry. I felt extremely safe, like all the weight I had been carrying just disappeared. But I was afraid to acknowledge it. I was afraid that I'd want to stay like this forever. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't want you spoiling me like this. Why not? I hate showing my weaknesses. Really? Is that all? That's all. He's like... Weakness, like... Being hugged is not a weakness. I gently extracted myself from Shion's arms. This whole thing would probably end someday. Better to stop now before I get caught up in some overly indulgent fantasy. That's enough for today. Okay. If I knew what your weaknesses were, I wouldn't tell anybody about them. And I wouldn't try to take advantage of them either. I'd be happy that you trusted me with them. So if you're alright with it, you should come here before bed and let me indulge you just a little. I mean, like, see, and that's the thing, like... The, I'm going to force affection on you is a little awkward and weird, but then you get to this with, like, she, I'm like, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to expose your weaknesses. I'm not here to, like, abuse you. You know what I mean? So, like, any other game and any other character, again, this kind of shit, like, um, excuse me? But, like, I don't know. I trust the words Shion says, I guess. I didn't say anything back to Shion. He was just so incredibly kind. Like, see, that I believe. So, like, him doing this, you're like, it's so... There's... I mean... But also, I'm okay with it. You know? They are a little bit trash, all of our boyfriends. But they're all kind of, like, nice and good in a way. You know? I couldn't answer him. The only thing I could do was get up and walk toward the door. And honestly, we were never going to ask for head pats or hugs until he forced them on us, so... Good night, sweet dreams. See you tomorrow. Good night. I feel cold. I automatically wrap my arms around myself after leaving Shion's room. But no matter how much I tried, I couldn't shake off the chill in my body. Because I now knew how warm Shion's arms were. He worries me. That warmth and tenderness of his was going to ruin me. I was afraid that everything I've worked so desperately to build up is about to crumble. And yet, I was sure I would visit his room again tomorrow. I craved the comfort of being taken care of, and I found myself seeking it out incessantly. It's scary. I could still hear his voice saying, see you tomorrow. I mean, that's the thing. Again, she's built up these walls so hard, and now Shion's over here ripping them fucking down. <gasps> Ooh, we... Oops. We have to go. The Tojo family influence is our only option. Guess what? That's the right answer. 
Smokey visits the house with an oddly depressed Rue. It seems he has a question? Play this event, yours? We were in the living room after dinner, hanging out as usual. Bro, again with the fashion magazines? Yeah, I like looking at them. Hmm. All these models are nothing but skin and bones. None of them got any sex appeal. I love you right now. So hard, Taiga. <laughs> As someone who has, like, lot, uh, like uh, my skin and my bones are hidden by the, like, copious amounts of flab. <laughs> uh, you would never know I had bones in my body. Thank you. Um, Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'm sure, no, you want, like, giant tits and an ass and, like, the tiny waist to go with it. You know, but whatever. I'm just going to appreciate that you are not on the, like... You know, supermodel bandwagon. You're like, nah. Okay, cool. Again, I will never fit your standards because, you know, well, we do as a character, but me personally. But, you know, I just, I'm still, I'm still here for it, okay? I still appreciate it. It's advantageous for fashion models to be flat chested, you know. It helps show off the silhouette of the clothes. Except for the fact that then you see the clothes and you're like, wow! And then you put it on your body and you have boobs and it doesn't work. I'm just saying. Is that so? Well, I guess that means... You trying to say something? No, oh, no, nothing. Rude. He's making fun of my chest again. You got a lot of nerve, Tyga. Well, I think I'm gonna head back to my room. Oh, I cannot wait for his route when he's just actually obsessed with your tiny boobs. You know, which is actually nice. Because, like, usually main characters in games actually have like, you're always like why does she have the giantest boobs okay they're not as bad as like the boy games where like you know all the girls tits are like twice the size of their head like and you're like that's just physically impossible she would fall over and her back would be broken nobody's boobs can be that like jesus you know what i mean um but like even the mcs in art and the Otobe games always have like kind of stacked chests you know what I mean? They, they're still boobalicious. So it's actually kind of nice when he's like, you're flat chested. Oh, it's actually different. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having itty bitty titties. Because, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're not like ginormous, but they're usually like, you just still like, oh, let me put on a bikini. That's a lot of boob. Where were you hiding those? Anyway, where do you think you're going? Tyga quickly exited before I could give him a piece of my mind. I guarantee you he's making fun of your boobs, but in his route, he's going to be like, actually, I really like your small boobs. <laughs> All I could do was sigh at how quickly he hightailed it out of the room. Good grief. You know what, though? I think you'd be a good model, Spacey. I mean that in the best way. You don't need to try and make up for him, Shion. Now that I think about it, has Shion ever worked regularly as a fashion model? Shion, um, have you ever done that before? A fashion modeling? No, not really. Oh, but I feel like I did do some private modeling when I lived with my designer friend. Shion, those nudes were not modeling, but it's okay. <laughs> Come on, I'm a, I'm a photographer. You want to model for me? Maybe you should get naked. Shion, Shion, there's episodes of Law & Order Special Victims Unit about this. <laughs> Oh, sweetie. Do you think you'd like to give it a try? Not at all. Oh, okay. I couldn't figure out what else to say. Shion just kept on smiling. Just because he talks about it normally doesn't mean that he didn't have a traumatic experience related to modeling. I mean, again, my model, my designer friend who asked me to model for him, it's weird. He made clothes, but I was always naked. <laughs> I wonder what happened to him. I'm curious, but it's a sensitive subject. Oh, God, I hope it's nothing like that, because I'm making jokes. <gasps> that really is no joke, but I just meant in the scheme of the game. You're like, she on sweetie. We're going to call Benson and Stabler, okay? This is like the second time we've had to call them in this episode. I'm just, not this episode, but I'm in this route. I'm just saying. But I'm still dying to know. Oh. It's gonna be horrible, isn't it? That weekend, when I came into the living room, Shion was lounging on the sofa by himself. I mean, Nayuta's wasn't really that horrible. I mean, like, his uncle kind of, like, 
made being a bodyguard sound awesome, and then he got these crazy notions in his head and kind of fucked everything up, but, you know, crazy ideals in his head, like, oh, I'm gonna only work for noble people. <laughs> you work for rich people, they all suck. We're, like, a weird exception, okay, because, like, but, like, rich people suck, man, all right, for the most part. Uh, so, you know, and then he got stepped on, and he liked it, so, like, his uncle was kind of verbally abusive. But, like, Nayuta didn't quite catch on, because he was, like, a little slow. But also knew he was slow, so I guess he did kind of catch on a little bit. He's like, keep telling me I'm stupid, and I know I'm stupid! Yeah, sweetie, but you're cute, so that's okay, you know? But, like, Shion is beautiful, and, like, well, we we know people kind of abused that in a way. Like, oh, yeah, this, oh, just for beauty and never really cared about him for him. So, even his father. Oh, you're too old, cast you out. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. It's nice that he's giving us affection, but I feel like he needs it, too. Aw, we'll get to that. Hey, Spacey, are you up to anything today? No, not really. And then how about we go shopping together? I found some great stores in a magazine. A date with Shion. Maybe if we're alone together, I can ask him about what happened in his past. Okay, let's... I'm enjoying our ringtone. Can you hear it? We might be able to hear the ringtone. It's a long ringtone. I would never answer my phone. This is so fun. <laughs> anyway, my phone rang right at that moment. I could keep listening to that ringtone. I don't know. It's fun. I looked down at the screen and saw Samuki's name pop up. Sorry, give me a sec. Hey, sure, no problem. I like how it just keeps going. Like, it's got a tone and then it just keeps repeating. Like an actual ringtone and not like, okay, we do it for a second and then we stop. Like, if you paused on that, that would just go for hours. Hello? Speezy, I have some I have something serious to discuss with you. Huh? What's going on? Sorry, Shion, I gotta leave. A few minutes later. I'm sorry for showing up out of nowhere like this. No, it's fine. Um Puzzled, I noticed someone else had come along. You brought him to my house, Smoogie? He's never gonna leave me alone! <sighs> Never tell the creepy nine-year-old where you live. Rue was standing beside Samugi. Um, I'm really sorry, both of you. I'm sorry about before. Rue. <laughs> she looked sad and angry. Like, there's something about his face. He's like, I don't trust you, but I also feel very sad. <laughs> What's with that look, Shion? He's yet again ruining another date. In just a minute, who wasn't this kid on TV the other day? Wow, he's famous! He sure is dainty, isn't he? If he were a girl, he'd grow up to be quite the beauty. Ichia! Oh my god. Stop it! Kasuga stood in the back of the room without saying a word, attentively watching everything. I'm, okay, I'm pretty fucking sure, just FYI. That is like Kasuga any minute of any given fucking day when he's not actually talking. He's always just standing in the back of the room, attentively watching everything. So, like, I don't know why. I mean, the game had to call it out once. But this could literally be this could literally be any second of any day we're in the room is this. Kasuga stood in the back of the room without saying a word, attentively watching everything. And I kind of wish they put that in every fucking scene where we were here. I mean, not everyone, but, like... A majority of them where we're here and, like, you know Kasuga's there is just throw that in here. It's just, like, this is the line that keeps haunting you through the whole game. It's just, Kasuga's just standing there watching. Because <laughs> you know he is! Um, no, we're not updating my thing. Okay, so what's the famous kid doing here? And that is a lone story. A real called me today, and he confided to me that he did use Spacey to get those photos taken. Yeah, we knew that. Photos? Oh, you mean the ones in the weekly magazine, right? Yes. Awful conniving for a kid. Oh, are you gonna dropkick him too? Tyga, bro fist, let's go. Well, I just... I really wanted to meet Leclerc, and... It's my dream to become a, one of Leclerc's angels! I hate this kid so much. <laughs> Sir, you were using Shion to get ahead. 
That's pretty awful. Um... Asui asked me to help him find a way to apologize to Spacey and Shion, so I figured bringing him here and giving him your address wasn't going to be a problem, Samuki. I love you, but girl, this is a line. And that's why you brought him here. I was angry too, but when I heard about what's been going on, I couldn't just sit by. What do you mean by that? Rue's had a lot going on lately. Come to think of it, I think we talked about that recently. Bird, headset is not yours to attack. Yes, you see the photo of Rue and Shion got picked up by the media. And many people are apparently frustrated that he didn't talk about Shion at all. Really? Yes, apparently Amethyst is a kind of sacred topic for the cleric fans. And so, to them, it seemed like Rue was trying to keep Shion all to himself. As a Leclerc fan, you didn't know this, you're acting like they're different people. But Samugi took us like, oh, I'm a huge fan. Girl. I guess she's like a fan, but not a huge fan. Okay. She's like, I have too many weeby hobbies, so I can't quite get that into Leclerc. But I still appreciate his shit, but like, my manga takes precedence. I get it. And some of those fans have been harassing and threatening Rue directly. I mean, again, wrong, but the kid kind of deserves it. Uh, you know. But that means you got lots of exposure, right? Isn't that what you wanted? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of requests for interviews. But before that, Mr. Tug... Uh, the reporter from before, it told me something. He said that Spacey's the only Tojo family heir. He said you're incredibly rich and have lots of power, so I shouldn't get involved. So then I quickly sent you an apology on Wiz, but you didn't respond. I'm gonna fucking punch this kid. Really? So wait. I got a lot of interviews, but before that, the reporter told me something. The reporter said that I, I told him I'm the only family heir, that I'm incredibly rich and have lots of power, so he shouldn't get involved. So he sent me an apology, and it's like, so... I'm gonna assume this was not before the photos, because the person would have been like, oh my god, you know that, right? And then you wouldn't have done this. But, I mean, I can understand him still going through his plot. He wasn't warned until after the fact. But, like, kid. Kid. I looked at Rue, speaking through tears. I started to feel a small sense of guilt. I wouldn't. I don't use manipulating you. I don't trust this fucker. I know I didn't reply, but seeing him in so much pain does make me feel bad. I mean, it's one thing if you want to decide to forgive him for what he did, cool. Like, all right, you know what? Okay, I do forgive you. But, like... You kind of deserve all the shit you're getting. Sort of. Within reason. You know. And in the meantime, you received a warning from the Tojo family, didn't you? It said, I never speak about them. No exceptions. We all look at Kasuga's over there just like... Yeah. Rue looked down, dejected. Samugi couldn't bear to see that, so she took over. Like, Samugi, I love you, but not right now. Like, you're siding with this bratty fucking child, and I'm not really sure how I feel about this. And you brought him to my fucking house. I was worried about it, but the photos were out there already, so there was nothing he could do. And because of the message from the family, he couldn't say anything during interviews. Again, yeah. I mean... I, I, okay, on one hand, I feel bad because he was like, I just wanted to get some attention. And then it's like, I can't talk about you and I can't talk about Shion. And then everybody's mad at him about it. But again, consequences of your douchey actions, child. Like, why do I feel bad for you? You're learning a hard knock fucking lesson. Don't fucking use people. Like, this is not, oh my God, I happen to be there and then cool and then whatever. And you tried to use the situation to your advantage and it kicked you in the face you purposely set this up you're an asshole now again i don't think people should be harassing him sending him death threats or anything but like calling him out and being like punk bitch yeah listen if you can't take some like i mean again he's a nine-year-old so i don't think people should be like hurling too many insults at a fucking nine-year-old no matter how whatever douchey is but like you know you're getting a little bit of hate online i mean that sucks okay but like again People are mad that I won't talk about Shion. You did this to yourself! Good lord. Smokey! Gonna knock some points off of you because, eh, siding with this asshole. I feel a little bit bad for him, but, like, not enough that it's like, oh, okay, let's fix it. Like, too bad, kid. Learn your lesson. 
use people like a douche. I mean, sure. Oh, he's nine. But, like, hi. This is some conniving level bullshit for a nine-year-old. Okay. This is not, I threw sand in that kid's face and now he's blind. And you're like, well, I mean, it was stupid fucking actions. But, like, <laughs> that's extreme. But you know what I mean? Like, anyway. To top it off, rumors started to circulate that the Tojo family was keeping an eye on him. And that started to affect his job. Okay, that's a little extreme. Okay, that's our fault. Like, he lost work? Huh. And now that you mention it, and I don't think I've seen him on TV much recently. Okay, that's douchey on our part. Telling him, don't you dare talk about us. Done. But, like, now rumors are spreading we're watching him, and so, like, he's not getting work. That's kind of extreme, and... All right, all right. I'll side with you there. And that's true. I haven't seen him at all lately, despite the big fuss made about it earlier. My agency said we should wait until things calm down, but... If I wait for that, then I'll get too old to become a Leclerc angel. And that's why he came for me to, to me for help. Well, that certainly is a lot. As I processed what they said, I glanced at Shion. But he was looking out the window aimlessly as if he hadn't heard the conversation. Shion. It's true Rude did something wrong. And I think it's only natural that he be reprimanded for it. Okay, okay, Samugi. I think using the Tojo family's influence might be overkill here. I agree with you on that. Having Kasuga or someone call and be like, don't you dare, don't talk about her, blah, 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 keep that out, whatever. And that's what I kind of thought they were doing. They were going to the guy, the photo guy, and being like, don't you dare post anything about her in it. Okay, cool. But like threatening the kid. I mean, it's one thing to be like, hey. Don't even mention that Spacey was there. Because, like, all he's doing... Like, look, Xion, okay, I'm with him. But, like, we weren't even in the picture, so there's really no reason to threaten him about us. So I'll give you that. You know? That... That's a little... That's a little extreme. We weren't in any of the pictures, and, like... Again, just warning him, don't talk about Spacey. Nip that in the butt, act like she wasn't even there. And the kid's like, okay... And, but threatening him and then following him and now ruining his life because that's a little bit much. That's, that's a bit much. I agree with this. I'm sorry. Really, truly. I'm so sorry. You wouldn't be so sorry if it wasn't ruining your career. I'm just going to throw that out there and I still dislike you, but there's a little overreaction for what you did. Now, wait just a moment. I didn't use any. Just as I was about to continue, it hit me. <laughs> Again, Kazuga. Smiling his nails, just dusting his nails off, shining them up on his collar over there. Oh, look at that speck of dirt. Don't tell me. <laughs> Kasuga's just like side eye. I'm like, do 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 make eye contact. Kasuga? I noticed that everyone in the room was staring intently at Kasuga. I love him for it. But like, Kasuga, you threatened a fucking child. You know, it's wrong, but... So hot. Just saying. I mean, not because, like, I don't want to marry a guy who, like, just threatens kids. But in this instance, Kasuga, I don't like this kid. And, like, I'm here for it. <laughs> it's so shady. I love it. He eventually opened his mouth to speak. Yes, I was the one who notified the publication in this child's agency. That was a necessary precaution for the Tojo family. They knew it. This degree of punishment's only natural for someone who harms Miss Spacey. Oh my god, is he like a fucking assassin? Did you- Is my butler like freaking an assassin? What is this de- You know what? I don't even care. I love him so fucking much more. Even if he's a child, I think he should learn whom he's- Whom he should and should not make enemies of. Note to self, do not make enemies of fucking Kasuka. Has nothing to do with me. Like, Kasuka, he didn't make an enemy of me? Holy shit. Holy shit. He is so sinister in this route. It's so much hotter. If I wasn't already in love with Kasuga, I'd have fallen so fucking hard at a broken my fucking nose, okay? Nose bleeds all around. Anyway. Kasuga's explanation baffled me. He said all that like it was completely reasonable. Yeah, he's a little bit of a psychopath. I'm here for it. Please, just stop this petty behavior. I mean, look at how sorry Rue is. 
I'm really sorry. I promise I'll never do it again. He can apologize all he wants, but who can say if it's genuine or not? Look at Kasuka's fucking anger. Uh, again, every time Kasuga opens his mouth, or now that he's glaring at this child, I don't know why you, you should be like, Kasuga, stop! And it's like, <gasps> glare at him some more. Why don't you kick him a little? <laughs> Spacey has problems. <laughs> Kasuga's so hot when he's angry, and he's just so mad at a child, and it, I don't know why. There's something seriously psychotic about it, but I'm here for it. You don't need to be so cruel. Miss Spacey, you must understand that this child comes from the entertainment world. He's much more cunning and resilient than you imagine. That I believe. <laughs> I agree. Shion? Remember what I said, that he could be good for some kinds of modeling? Ru hung his head helplessly after hearing Xion's cold assessment. But that means we're preventing Ru from achieving his dreams. Oh, that's not our problem. Actions have consequences. Okay, see, I'm 100% with Xion and Kasuga. Although, I don't think I'm just what it really depends. Like, Kasuga going after the, like, going to the photographer guy, his publication, and being like, don't you fucking dare. 100% on you because freaking paparazzi people are fucking scum, okay? So, like, they would have done anything. You had to threaten them. He's Rue's a child. So, I understand calling his agency and being like, listen, you make sure he doesn't fucking say shit? Poor Cole, but that's it. That's it. You don't need to be like, we're watching you. You know what I mean? And, like, ruin the kid's life. You know what I mean? You can make threats and be like, listen, if he says a word about this... I will fucking ruin his life. But otherwise, as long as he keeps his mouth shut, go on about your business, boy, we don't care. You know what I mean? So, like, I think you took it a little bit far. You went a little bit ahead of it. You know, stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with it, but you don't need to jump that fucking far ahead, okay? But I do agree that I'm not necessarily sure I trust Rue's apology or think he's sorry about it. You know what I mean? And technically, actions do have consequences. Okay? These might be, like, really, really, really dire consequences for a moderately shitty action. But, like, you know. Eh. Kasuga wouldn't listen. That especially makes me feel sorry for Rue. Eh, no. <laughs> then at that moment... Well, guess it's up to Taiga. Taiga shot up suddenly, brimming with enthusiasm. We all stared at him, dumbfounded, while he stood imposingly in front of Rue. No. Listen up, you little brat. You know what you've done, don't you? You're desperate. I get it. But that don't mean you go around hurting others. Yes, I understand. It's true. Taiga lived in an orphanage. He knows how to school kids. This is amazing. All right, then. Buckle up, buttercup. Oh, my God. I love the fact that Taiga just called someone buttercup. Because I do that a lot, too. Suck it up, buttercup! Oh, you're now saying buckle up, but Targa! I didn't think you were going to worm your way into my heart like this, but here we are. Well, no one will ever take the place of Kasuka. And I still really love you, Gia. But, like, Targa, you're getting better as we go. Anyway. Huh? Did he just slap the kid? He bopped him on the head. Look at little Chibi Samugi! I don't think we've ever seen Chibi Samugi. Have we? I don't know. She's adorable, though. I love her little hat. Anyway. I mean, I love her hat and the regular thing, but I just like another chibi, too. I don't know. One smack in the face later, he'd given Rue a particularly violent punishment. You just hit someone else? Okay. Kasuga was crossing a line, but this might have gone a little bit further than Kasuga. I'm just saying. He hit him. He really did. Well, time to let bygones be bygones. That wraps it up nicely, eh, Kasuga? The guns here make quick work of your tiff with the kid. Oh, I don't think that's going to matter. Kasuga's going to take this fucker out. Nobody in the room was able to speak except for Taiga, who was inexplicably proud of himself for punching a child. Okay. Like, Taiga, what the fuck? <sighs> and then... <laughs> Not even my mommy and daddy have hit me before. <laughs> 
that's probably why you're a spoiled little twat. It's okay. I'll yell at that big, mean, meathead after this. Hey, who are you calling mean? You're not helping! Um, uh, uh maybe I should grab some ice. <laughs> Give me a break. I didn't hit you that hard. Your fist hurt, Taiga. Believe me. And fucking Nayuta ran into a goddamn fucking streetlight and knocked that shit down. He understands. If that didn't hurt him and your fist do, I'm just saying. Okay? I took it easier on him than I did with you. You shouldn't hit him. Violence accomplishes nothing except for making a child cry. And that's like the second worst sound. No children crying is probably the most annoying sound. If you want to make him understand what he did and be sorry, then you need to use words, not fists. I mean, although, not sure if the words would get through to him, but the fists might. I'm just, look, look. <laughs> I do hate this kid, but I'm not necessarily sure punching him is the right choice. <laughs> Gotta feel sorry for Rue for being literally a punching bag. Like, everyone hates this kid. It's so funny. All right, whatever. Hey, kid, Rue is it? Sorry I hit you. You can look at it like another life lesson. I'm gonna sue you! What? I'm gonna sue you for physical assault! You're a violent man beating on an innocent child! Hold up, just wait! This isn't some empty threat! When I say I'm gonna do something, I mean it! And this is where fucking Kasuga just like, jumps in and just glares at the kid. And he's like, never mind, I'm gonna leave! L let's remain calm! Told you. Told you all fucking Kas We are all literally fighting with the child and arguing. Kasuga just walks in like, stop it. And we're all like, do what Kasuga says. He will kill you. He's so intimidating and scary and sexy. This man, I didn't think this man could get any sexier. And he just keeps doing it. Like, he might kill us. He might stab me and or put me in a cage. I am okay with it. He's gonna have that child murdered. <laughs> Kazuka is scary. He's scary, but I love him so much. Um, if I wasn't so desperately in love with Kazuka from the moment he walked on screen, I might be terrified and be like, I don't know if I like Kazuka. I might have changed my mind, but there's no way. There is no way. We are so into the debauchery levels that everything Kazuka does, like, Kazuka, this is scary, but I'm kind of turned on. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I love him a little too much. I'm just saying. Anyway. That's enough! Kasuga! For goodness sake, stop acting without thinking. That's exactly what this child wants. If a person under the Tojo's family care harms someone, even barely, we will be the ones put on trial. And this child's aware of that. He's factored it into what he's saying. What do you mean? My guess is that'll ask us to rescind the pressure we've exerted on him. In exchange for dropping the assault charge. What? I turned around in disbelief and saw Rue looking straight at me. I love the fact that we're like, we're going to feel bad for him. Nope, I was on Kasuga's side. I, okay, I did think Kasuga might have gone a little bit far. But then it's like, I guess you didn't go far enough, Kasuga. Huh. He looked uncomfortable, but I sensed that he wasn't going to back down at all. I think the only thing we're gonna have to do is murder him and bury him in the backyard, then. Apparently, Kasuga was not entirely wrong. Oh, <laughs> Kasuga knows shade. What a little shit. Say whatever you want. I don't care. I don't have anything left to lose. Neither does Taiga. He's broke. What's the point of working hard as an idol if I can't become an angel? It's all I've ever wanted. Oh, Shion's gonna sell out. Go talk to his dad to help us and this twatty little child. Okay, I'm just saying, Kasuga, get the buckets in the cement. We're giving this kid some new shoes. Want I get new shoes? Yeah, and we're going to have you go swim at the fishes. Don't worry, you don't need a snorkel. Clasping his hands together, Rue pleaded with me as his eyes shimmered with tears. I think we need to kill him. It was selfish and childish of him. Okay, again, he's nine, so childish, yeah. But his eyes were just as sincere as they had been when he first told me about his dreams. Girl, don't fall for this shit! Okay, I know that what Rue did was really bad. Yeah! But we can't deprive him of it. 
deprive him of his dreams. Um, he wasn't going to achieve his dreams anyway. Kasuga, you can withdraw the pressure you are putting on Rue. But, miss, please do it. I looked directly at Kasuga and tried to implore him and his stubborn attitude. And then... Understood. <gasps> However, if you ever take advantage of Miss Spacey again, I'll not be so merciful. I'm sorry, but why can't we marry Kasuga? This man is so fucking sexy. He's threatening a child for us. Most people would think that's extreme, but I just, I am here for it. Y yes, sir. Because Taiga punched this kid. No face. Kasuga just glares at him and is like, I will take you down. And the kid's like, I'm going to quit modeling. I'm, I'm going to retire now. The kid is terrified for his life. I'm just saying. Kasuga has that effect on people. Me, it's more like, oh my god, you're so hot right now. But other people are very scared of him. I can see it. It's great. I love it. Rue nodded, even though his face was pale, right? It seems he understood that Kasuga's words weren't a mere threat. Yeah, because Kasuga looks like he might kill someone. <laughs> well then, if you all will, if you'll all excuse me, I suddenly have much to attend to. Kasuga then left the living room quickly with his phone in his hand. Well, that could have gone worse. It turned out okay, right, Rue? Although, Samugi, you brought him here, so... Docking points for you. Okay, bestie, girl. You're gonna have to make it up to me. Mm -mm. Yeah! Alrighty, sounds like as good a time as any to chill and have some tea, eh? Yes, I feel rather parched myself. And now you to come help me, would you? <laughs> Okie dokie! And then... Uh, um, there was Rue, who just wiggled out of a tight spot, and instead of being like, I think we should leave, yeah, I think that's a good idea, you're just gonna stick around? Really? He kept glancing over at Shion, don't you look at my boyfriend! My butler already schooled you, don't, just leave him out of this. Shion noticed his rather obvious gesture and smiled at him. Hmm. Um, Shion, everything worked out, huh? Good luck with everything, Bye bye Shion pointed to the front door as if to say, On your way now. He's so unyielding. Well, uh, someone has to be a hard ass because the kid batted his little eyes at him and your fucking womb got all crazy and you did stupid shit and you let him get away with his bullshittery. I'm just saying. Girl. Uh, you're acting like a kid too. Taiga then patted Rue on the head as if he were backing him up. Oh my god, Taiga, don't touch him! Rue, stay and have some tea with me. We're all good now, yeah? Can I? Oh, wow, thank you! I hate this child. You're all right, kid. I don't humor him now. Well, I guess everything turned out all right. Yeah. Samuki and I are like, this is fucking weird. <gasps> this is probably the end. Okay, let's just go a little bit. Okay, anyway. Afterward, we enjoyed a refreshing tea break. Maybe it was his impressive communication skills, but Rue became friends with everyone else in no time. Especially with Taiga. As expected, he was really good with kids. Though sadly, even Rue treated Nayuta like a child. Ichiya was his usual self and in good spirits from all of Rue's sly compliments. Seeing Ichiya like that made me worry that we were won over a little too easily. Exactly! Kasuga and Shion are the only intelligent people in this house! Do I see you that way too? Okay, we'll stop here. I thought maybe it was the end of this little chapter, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.